Greetings all. So we're back now, we're ready to start our mashing process. Uh, I've put the correct amount of water using the calculations, these are in the books, uh, to um, start mashing and I've got it to my uh, mash-in temperature. Uh, mashing temperatures are quite complicated and they're very based on recipe, so there is a little bit in the brochure about how to do this, but we will put up some tables on our website uh, to clarify this process. But generally there's a few phases we go through, different rest stages. Uh, to get the best extraction of sugar from our grains and minimize proteins. Um, anyway, so I've got my grains here. My uh, What's the recipe we're doing, Matt? This is a dunkel recipe that we're doing today. So yeah. it's one that we're going to be using for my brewery. So and how, how, much, um, how much grain is there? Involved? This is 4.7, so it's quite a big bill. Um, okay. It's going to be a stronger beer. Um, mm. But we're not, we're not skimping. So. And what's the mix of grain you've got in there? So this is in part Munich. And then there's um, a few varieties of the Gladfields malt. So there's their dark chocolate, uh, their toffee, Shepherd's Delight, and Aurora. Right. Um, Look forward to tasting it. Mostly Munich, though. Okay. Um, cool. So, anyway, so what you have to do, let me show you the camera over here and take a peek, is you have to cap off this end pipe here. So, this is the recirculation pipe or the overflow pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, we cap that off just simply to um, pretty much to stop the uh, grain going down the pipe. It's, that's the real reason. Okay. Um, and that little cap comes with the system? It does indeed. So in goes the okay. grain. Okay, let's have a look good. Can be pretty dusty. Pretty dust. It's all good though. Okay. Oh, dust everywhere. Now, um, when doing that, it's actually best to stir it's it. It's got to wipe the lens. Okay. <laughs> it's best to stir it as it's going in. Um, I like to whack mine all in and give it a thorough stir. But just you don't want to make sure there's no clumps of grain when it goes in. Take the cap off at this stage, that's the cap out. Don't want to leave that on. Okay. And it's just giving it all a good stir. It can get pretty rough. I just want to avoid clumps, so make sure it's really well mixed in there. Okay, so as you can see now, there's no like visible dry bits, but I'll give it a bit of a bit of better mix after this, uh, just to make sure there's water contact with the uh, all the grist. So you don't need to do it for too long. That'll do. All right. Yep, that'll get awesome. us there. Okay, the next part is quick installation. The quick installation of this little panel here, so that goes on top. Just put it in gently so it sits flat. Now it can get a bit tricky because this silicon. Bobby here wants to come off all the time, so you just have to uh, just put it be in careful. evenly and slowly and make sure that the silicon ring stays on the outside of the uh, mesh plate. What do you call it? Uh, it's, I don't really know what the name for that one is. It just separates the grain. It's like a, um, there's a name for it in the book. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. And this is the little overflow uh, piece here. Mm -hmm. So we just whack him over there. So that's for any um, liquid that's uh, accumulating on top of your grain, uh, just to go down to the bottom and recirculate so your pump doesn't dry out. Just so that if you've got a very dense uh, packing of grain, it doesn't mean that all the water sits on top and doesn't go anywhere, so it just keeps it recirculating. So that's that ready to go. My temperature's correct. Now the last thing I need to do, let me just take this off here. So what's that? Yeah. So this is the recirculating... Um, uh, system so yeah. you whack this chap on so that's the lid so that's now you can't put this chap on until the lid's on because it doesn't work so this is the, what they call the tempered glass lid so it actually re holds in all the heat um, especially designed to keep the heat and in and keep the system efficient and then pretty much you just rewind this guy back on now what you want to make sure is if you do if you can take a look through that lid is you want to make sure that this pipe here isn't going back straight into that overflow, otherwise your water is just going to be going in circles and not having so any contact yeah, with which the ground. So this pipe mm -hmm. here, the recirculating pipe, mm -hmm. isn't going straight into that overflow. It's just the perfect length and it's perfectly centered with that overflow pipe that if you whack it in, so you need it'll it just the, go in circles and you'll never get any contact You need with it the to ground. the side. You need it to the side, correct. Which this is. Okay, temperature set. So you can ignore my mash in temperature here. I'm doing an acid rest because of the recipe. Um, but there are simpler, uh, more simple recipes and uh, mash in temperatures, but we'll discuss that another time. Mm -hmm. So it's all, all sorted. All you do is turn on this pump, 
set to mash temperature on goes the pump and we will then increase the temperature for our various rests as I showed earlier by holding down the set button and increasing the temperature at the correct time periods and this mash will probably take about an hour and a half generally they take an hour. So now it's sort of well you could probably see now that it's starting to circulate through and we're going to bring the temperature up to what are we doing this temperature to Matt? We're going to 45 initially but we will get as far as 70 and 75 is the mash out temperature. Okay so the, the, it doesn't have a timer so you've got to follow the time yourself so you just get, set your stopwatch. So on your iPhone on. or an egg timer if you... Yeah so you need to be aware of the times and the recipe follow that it'll do all the pumping for you and the temperature but you've got to do the timing. Correct. Alright that it? See you in the next part. All right.